Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about syntax directed translation and definition. In our last class, we have given a basic understanding about semantic analysis phase. Whatever the concept we discussed in our last class, we use the same concept. We are not going to discuss any new concept here, but we are going to understand the terminology, textbook terminology, which we are using in our coming classes. So please watch our previous class and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, in our last class we discussed that semantics analysis phase can be why we got this name syntax directed translation. Uh, what we discussed in our last class. Uh, this is the function which we have written for a syntax analysis phase. In the same function we are going to add some extra coding to check the type checking and three address code to generate the three address code. So that's why it's got the name syntax directed translation during the syntax analysis phase we are going to write some translations to obtain the type checking and a three address code that's why it got the name syntax directed translation coming to that in order to obtain the syntax directed translation we need to write syntax directed definition so what's that syntax directed definition means sdd is equal to cfg plus semantic rules What's that mean? Uh, during the syntax analysis phase, we are writing context-free grammar to find the syntax analysis phase. For that context-free grammar, if you add the semantic conditions, that we call it a syntax directed definition. Uh, how we write that? Uh, let's try to take with an example. This is the production which we are using in our expression grammar e tends to e plus t. Whenever it is going to expand this expression, uh, if you are using a uh, uh, top down approach it is going to expand if you are using bottom up approach you are going to reduce uh, so uh, during this you need to do some action that's the semantic condition it is going to say e dot val is equal to e1 dot val plus t dot val we are using e1 uh, in order to separate the leftmost e and rightmost e that's why they, they will follow different naming for uh, e e dot val is equal to e1 whatever the action you have to take for e tends to t that is the action semantic condition uh, this is what we call it as syntax directed definition f tends to id f dot val is equal to id dot lex val one more point you have to understand this e dot val is equal to t dot val this val we call it as attribute here so from the programming perspective attribute is a variable to hold a value the value may be int float char or string you can take any value in the attribute and one more important point f dot value is equal to id we are writing attributes not only for non-terminals we are writing it for terminals also id is equal to f dot value is equal to id dot whatever the lexical analysis phase it is going to give for id value 2 plus 5 plus 5 2 is one id value the at this position for this id what's the lexical analysis phase is going to give that is what lex value means uh, this is how we write the semantic rules to obtain our syntax directed translations uh, these semantic rules are implemented in the coding so this is the terminology which you have to understand what syntax directed definition and what syntax directed translation what's attribute means we are going to use this terminology in our next classes hope you understand the terminology if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the concept in the uh, comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you